I'm working on the wall today. Um, the bedroom walls are done. They're framed, insulated, and upholstered. Uh, so I'm working on the kitchen wall. It's gonna be a little different. I'm not gonna upholster it. Um, I'm gonna use tongue and groove and do like a shishigi bond burn. So here's what we're working with. This will be the kitchen wall. And you can see this wall is uh, done and upholstered. Upholstery is coming off a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not gonna use plywood and upholstery because uh, the stove will be here. I don't want the upholstery to pick up any scents um, or get wet. So I'm gonna do a tongue and groove uh, type of planks, cedar planks maybe. Uh, I'm gonna do a shishigi bond burn on them. So I'll burn them, sand them, and put like some, what's it called? Just some nice oil on it. And that'll seal it up, keep it from getting water damaged um, or holding a scent. Uh, but because of that, I have to add a little bit more of a structural frame. I can't just screw it on the sides and around the window. I have to take in account every single piece needs to be supported. So I got to figure it out. And I have this obstacle here. This is a mess of ports um, that are original with the van. There was like an outdoor shower, a vent, gas line coming in, uh, an old uh, propane furnace. And so I will be taking all of these out. But for now, I'm going to build around them kind of because I'll be replacing them with newer um, different shaped ports. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to build a frame that kind of goes around them and keep the wall open because um, this will be behind a cabinet. And that way, once I have to replace them, there won't be a wall in the way. So that's what we're working on today. These pieces of wood like to split at the ends if you just screw them in. So I've got them all marked and I'm going to uh, pre-drill all of these and try to get them fit. Another problem I'm running into is the van's floor isn't level. So if I cut these all to 13 inches, one will be too tall and one will be too short. So hopefully when I add the brackets, they're all going to squeeze together. <laughs> Like this is all I'm gonna get today um, but yeah I'm gonna have cut out four more one will go here um, here here and there um, they're all different sizes because the floor is not level uh, which is okay and then uh, tomorrow I'll get the tongue and groove wood and start cutting out strips that can go on each side and really trim it out and then um, Got to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> with this whole cluster right there. We suffered one casualty and drilled through my finger. Um, yeah, there's our progress. What's up? It's uh, about 10 o'clock at night. Um, just stopped at Home Depot, got this tongue and groove. I'm at Make Salt Lake right now. I'm gonna get this all cut out and mounted to the wall. You can see I worked really hard today and got the frame all done. Um, so yeah, let's get to it.
So it's getting late guys. Uh, I'm making some progress on the wall. I hit a little snag, my countersink broke. I was like reaching over to put it in and I twisted it while I was going in. So I broke a countersink. Um, but yeah, this is just a mock-up. This is just a mock-up um, so I can get the kitchen all framed out and know how big the wall is gonna be. All this is coming off. I'm gonna burn it all, um, sand it and then stain it and then uh, you know, put the insulation and the wires underneath. So this is just to kind of get a sense of how it's going to look um, and get them all marked up before I put the measure out the cabinets. So I'm in Make Salt Lake today. The shop has been super busy, even though it's like midnight. Um, but I got this uh, pocket hole jig made by Craig. What this allows is me to make uh, these pocket holes and then with a uh, special type of screws, it sinks, it sinks the screw right into um, this hole that's pre-drilled and it makes a really quick and easy way to fasten together the framework for a cabinet. And that's what I'm working on tonight is my uh, kitchen cabinet. So you just clamp your piece of wood to the table, line up the jig, which is easy. You just push it onto the end. And then, away. So yeah, now that these holes are done, it makes it really easy to screw pieces of wood together. This one even comes with its own uh, drill bit. that's super long, because you're gonna need a long one. And then you buy special screws and there's a guide that tells you which one. Um, for three quarter inch wood, you want one and a quarter inch screws. And I'll just do an example, because it's really easy. You line it up, put this in the pre-drill hole. So it's really flat and it would have been better if I um, put it in a vise and if the pieces of wood were actually square, but it makes a really strong, really strong bond. There's no ply and um, you can make it even stronger if you add glue in the process. But uh, I think that'll be good. And if I do need to remake the cabinet or take it apart, it's as simple as um, taking out these screws. There, and everything comes apart and you can change a different piece if you need to, if you made a mistake. Yeah, this is a really easy way to do cabinetry if you're not familiar with cabinets such as myself. <laughs> so I'm in the shop. It's Make Salt Lake. If you're in the Salt Lake area, check out Make, Make Salt Lake. It's like a monthly subscription. You get access to a wood shop and a metal shop. I'm here at midnight. It's 24-7. Um, I just really appreciate this communal space. Anyway, this is uh, the cabinet so far for the kitchen. I have the front piece, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna make a face frame or not. Um, this is the front piece, and this is the back piece. It's about it's gonna be about 24 inches tall when it's done with the tabletop. But I have a 11 inch gap here, and this will have drawers in it, and then this one will be the cabinet and access to the water. Um, you can see it's all assembled with these pocket hole um, screws. So I have this piece screwed into this piece, and then I also drilled some holes extra holes on this one. So when I put it in the van, I can fasten this to the subfloor um, just by drilling into here. cabinet um, make sure if you're doing these pocket screws that you're on a flat surface 
This table is all warped and has a bunch of glue on it. So when you try to make it flat, that one's pretty good. But uh, a lot of these are kind of crooked. You can see it's not perfectly flush there, which isn't too bad. I'm probably gonna sand the whole thing. Um, but one side's gonna have plywood on it. One side will be flat against the wall. And then the top will have a table on it. And obviously you want it as flat and square as you can get it. You can see this is a little wonky. I don't know if that's the table <laughs> or the, the cabinet. Yeah, that's uh, about three hours of work, cutting and measuring, drilling and screwing. So these have screws in them now connecting to this piece. This has screws connected to this piece, but you can see I offset the screw holes just by a couple millimeters. And that way when I put the countertop on, I can screw in and fasten the countertop with these very clean, clean way. Hopefully it uh, works out okay. It's 3.30 AM and my van's a mess. I've been making some huge progress. I'll flip the camera around and show you what I've done. Here's what I've done tonight. Um, fridge is still there. I'm gonna raise the fridge four inches, four and a half inches, and there's gonna be a drawer underneath. It's gonna be a drawer underneath that pulls out and becomes a shower, the same footprint as the fridge, essentially. And then I got some more wood like this that's gonna go on top with magnets as cutting boards, and hopefully it'll be level with this counter. This counter was made from a tabletop of an old coffee table. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use it cause it's really warped and bent, but who knows. But here's the cabinet I made. Um, it's looking pretty good. It's working around everything. Um, you have a 11 inch, an 11 inch gap here for the drawers to slide it in. And then this piece will be a cabinet with uh, the water pump, uh, maybe a five gallon bucket, a five gallon water tank um, to hold the gray water. We'll see. Um, I got this done today. Uh, trimmed it off so it matches that. They're both gonna have a Shushugi Bond burn. And then I trimmed this off here. Yeah, that's it so far. The van's a mess, I'm a mess. Uh, you can't really see the progress, but the shape is almost there. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get the closet in. This elevated, I'll put a piece of plywood here. Um, I got these four inch side rails, so one will go here, one will go on this side. And I'll put a piece of plywood on top, and then um, we'll get the fridge mounted down with uh, straps so it doesn't move around. Yeah, very excited. So I think I'm calling it a night. Uh, there's so much I can do right now, but I don't have sheet plywood. I don't have plywood. I don't have plywood. I don't have the stain I want. There's a lot I kind of could do, but I think we're gonna call it a night since it's 3.30. Update, it's a new day. It's 8.30 at night. I'm gonna finish the kitchen assembly and if I have time try to cut out a wall for the closet. So I traced up the wall with a box and a pen. You can also use a piece of wood but you follow the wall all the way up with your pencil against the edge of the block and it gives you the exact curve of the wall or pretty darn close. And then once I cut that and I push this wood all the way against the wall, I can then trace a line here and cut that as well. And it'll be a perfect fit. So this is a basic wood bit. You can also make fine, nice wood bits. Like, a, we should say fine and clean. Cut.
much, mainly because I can't really get any good angles. Um, but yeah, this is what we got. We're building that raised platform so the fridge can sit on top of it. And hopefully in the future, um, I'll have a shower pan that comes out from underneath and I can put a curtain up top. That's future planning. But besides the shower drawer, I wanted the fridge at the same height as uh, the kitchen counter. So it becomes one long seamless countertop. And we'll see how well I can manage that with different thicknesses of wood. We'll see. So this is the vision fridge there with cutting boards on top to match the level of the counter. I'll have a cupboard there and behind those planks of wood will be drawers. And then hopefully I can fit a shower pan under there. It's kind of bowing. I don't know if you can see the bow, but it's dipping down in the middle because that piece of wood isn't directly underneath the feet. So there's a lot of weight underneath the middle. So I'm gonna support it in the very back um, with a piece of wood. Awesome. All right, guys, I've been working late nights. I got a hard deadline. Um, in about two months, I gotta move out of my place and I'm moving into the van full time. So I'm really motivated to get as much done as I can before I'm living in it. Cause it'll be hard to modify things and add um, stuff, you know, when you're living in it. So I've been working late, it's, it's 2.30 AM. There is the closet wall. I just added that. I had some extra wood and a template already kind of made. And it's not a perfect snug fit, but I think once I upholster the inside, the upholstery will kind of bridge the gap against the wall and cover up any light leading through. I think there's going to be any lights inside. But um, yeah, so there you go. I'll try to get you some light. It's a 13 and a half inch um, closet. This is the bedroom, closet, and we work our way around. And you have the kitchen. And maybe you can see the van is very messy has been working around things and luckily haven't hurt myself yet but i did drop a box of screws that was very annoying anyway just letting you guys know of the progress second coat of this tongue oil on the project. It's looking pretty good. It's got this glossy look. Um, I'm hoping it stays like that after it dries. If not, maybe I'll do a third coat. But it says to um, put a generous amount on for the first coat and uh, you'll see the wood absorb the oil and maybe dry out. So make sure it's uh, nice and wet and where it dries out, give it a little bit of extra. Some of the spots will be more thirsty than others. Like give it 24 hours to dry completely and kind of harden um, and then put on your second coat. It doesn't get hard like an enamel would, but um, we'll see. It'll probably stiffen up and have a glossy sheen. That's what I'm kind of going for. And that's what it says it'll do. So we'll see if tongue oil is the way to go. Another kind of a more natural oil you could use to treat your wood is uh, linseed oil. Um, I was debating whether linseed or tongue oil uh, or even grapeseed oil can help. Uh, but under Shushugi Bond Burns, most people will use tongue oil. I think that's just what is traditionally used. So yeah, we'll see how this turns out. It's looking pretty good right now. You can see some of the grain. It's kind of cool, burned look. Um, where's my samples? So, um, this is kind of what 
the Shishugi Bond will look like. Again, this is an imitation. Um, this is just a surface burn, and you can see just the surface burn has brought out the grain. Uh, when I do the real burn, I'm going to char it, and then I scrape off the, the, the char with a nylon brush, and it really raises the grain, and so you get like a 3D texture um, that'll look like this. It'll have uh, three different colors of burn, and but it'll also have the texture of the grain, which we don't have now. But I'm really excited of how it's going to look. It's going to be a really unique um, style and texture, and I think it'll really accent the van. So we'll see.